Hi everyone, it's Tom. Welcome to video number 37 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. In this video, we'll start looking at the built-in RIDI or RTTY functions. Some of the settings require a little bit of explanation of BOTO code. That's the digital code standard that defines radio teletype. So this runs a little bit long. Let's get started. Well, as I'm recording this this weekend, it is the CQ WPX Ready Contest, the Worldwide Ready Contest. So, as you can see, 20 meters is pretty full with the RTTY activity going on. So this seemed like a good time to take a look at some of the Ready functions that are built into the 7300. First, you'll notice that I'm already in RTTY, or RIDI mode here. And I'm going to go back to uh, the uh, center mode on the scope. I've got it set to 10 kilohertz up and down, so we can see some of the signals a little bit more clearly. So one of the functions that is built in with RIDI on the 7300 is, without any sort of an external computer, you can, re uh, you can copy... RIDI signal. So if we go to menu, you'll notice this top center position here says decode. And you may recall that when you're in sideband, and actually let's just go back here to take a look. Uh, when you're in sideband, this says voice, so you have voice functions on this top button. When you are in CW, as we just finished in the last couple of episodes, you have the keyer functions here. So this top center touchscreen function changes depending on what mode you're in. So let's go back to Ready, and let's take a look at the decode function. So now, when I've hit decode, you notice we have this Ready decode that has shown up here, and you have a little audio scope that shows up in addition to the spectrum scope that you have up above. So first, the default settings actually pretty much work well for standard RIDI, 45 baud and 170 hertz uh, shift frequency. That's pretty standard, and you can actually see that it's copying somebody pretty well here, even though they're way in the background. So let's try to see if we can find some signals. So here's one, and if you notice on the audio scope, there's two vertical lines here. And the idea is you want to try to tune it. Let's hope this guy comes back, or we'll tune somebody else in. There's plenty of activity. Um, all right, let's find somebody else here. There we go. When somebody is transmitting RIDI, you want to tune it so that the two tones peak on those two lines. There we go. Now we can see him. He's sending 599. There's a serial number for this contest, so you see 158, and of course his call sign here. So, thank you from W7VXS CQ. So this guy's out there working. 158, he hasn't been working too long, or maybe he's not working in a, in a big group, because uh, we're only in the last couple hours of the contest as I'm recording this. So let's go just find a couple others here for grins. And as soon as I get to one, they a strong one, they invariably go away. And there we go. CQWPX, NG1R. And then we'll take a look at all of the different functions that you can do besides just decoding. Once we bring up the Ready decode screen, then you get a couple pages of menu items on the bottom here, or function buttons, to control the decoding. Before we take a look at those, I will, uh, notice also that the spectrum scope is up here. The, the RF spectrum scope is shown, and you can expand or you can have that be there or not by pressing the M scope button. If I press that, it just goes back to showing the full frequency display, or only the frequency display and signal strength meter. And then if I put the M scope back on, it goes uh, back up and shows a smaller number display with the decoder. 
And there's also an expand button uh, on the touchscreen, expand slash set. Expand, if you recall from the RF spectrum scope, would expand the spectrum scope to a larger display. This does the same thing, but only for the decode. So if I touch expand, it's going to expand the RIDI decode to be pretty much full screen, and then your spectrum display goes away. So let's take a look at these other functions and what we have, and then we'll walk through them uh, slowly one at a time. So on page one, uh, we have hold, clear, transmit memories, and then expand slash set. And then the first button takes you to the second page, which gives you log, log view, adjust, and the expand set uh, is still on that screen as well. So let's go back to page one. Hold is pretty much self-explanatory. If you press hold, you get a little hold indicator here, and you'll notice that there is no decoding going on. It stops the screen, so if there's something that you want to read and you're not too concerned about what's coming up right now, it will stop any further decoding. I don't know why it is that every time I tune to a signal, the guy stops trans... There. So there's nothing being decoded. So we'll go back. Then the other button you have is clear, and if you just touch it momentarily, actually nothing happens. You have to touch and hold this one. And if you touch and hold clear, it will clear the screen, as you would expect. Transmit memory brings up the RTTY or RIDI transmit memory. So just like the voice memories and the CW keyer memories, you have eight of them. We're going to cover these separately. So you press the exit button to get back out of those. And then expand and set. I already showed you what expand does. If you press and hold this, it takes you into a set screen where you have a couple pages of uh, different options. So scope averaging, this is the FFT scope, which is the RIDI FFT scope. So that was the audio scope in the corner. You can set averaging over several samples. You have off and then two, three, and four samples. So if I set it all the way to the maximum, see if we can see that, uh, you'll notice that um, the movement, or you'll see the change on that. Let's see if he stops here. Yeah, you see that it sort of slowly goes back down, so the response time slows down a little bit. Um, and if I turn averaging off completely, then it's going to respond very rapidly as the signals are changing. So that's kind of a visual preference thing, how you like to see that response. Next is the scope color. And if you notice, I have it set to green right now. So let's say, for example, you're not partial to green and you like blue. And you can add, this is the, the red channel up here. Here, we'll do, uh, we'll do Bob Heil purple. Uh -huh. If any of you are familiar with all the Heil, Heil microphone products, uh, I think Bob Heil likes uh, purple as one of his favorite colors. So there you see that the FFT audio display is now purple. So you can make that whatever color you happen to enjoy. The next function here is decode USOS, which is unshift on space. This is set to on by default, and the... What this means is in, uh, you, you have to understand Bado code that's used for radio teletype a little bit. It is a 5-bit code, which gives you only 32 characters. And if you take the 26 characters that are the alphabet, 32 doesn't give you enough to do the alphabet plus all the digits. So there is a shift character. It's a, one of those 32 in uh the Bado code, that when you send the shift character, then the next characters are decoded as the symbols function or non-letter characters. So the other 32 characters include numbers and special symbols like question marks and so on and so forth. The unshift on space uh, has the radio automatically, if it receives a space character, which is the same in both sets of 32, it'll shift back to the letters 
automatically. And that's because sometimes, especially if you have noisy environments, you may not pick up the unshift code. So there's a there's a special code that says shift into symbols and numbers, and then another code that says shift back to letters. And if you miss that, then when somebody's sending regular letters, you might see a whole bunch of numbers and symbols and gibberish when they're really trying to send letters. So unshift on space has the radio, if it sees a space, it automatically goes back to letters. And the theory being that when you're sending a sequence of numbers, you're going to send them all together, and then if you send a space, you're going to want to go back to letters anyway. So this is fairly commonly left on. The default is on, uh, and your choices, of course, are on and off. Decode new line. So this determines how the radio decodes a new line. Again, in Bordeaux, there is a character for carriage return, which on old mechanical typewriters or teletype units moved the carriage back to the beginning of the line. There's a separate character called line feed, which makes it feed one line of paper when these were old printing machines. And then you can have carriage return followed by a line feed, which moves the carriage back, and a line feed. When it's, uh, what this function does is this says that if the RIDI decoder sees a carriage return or a line feed or the two of them together, it's going to go to a new line. So it'll return and automatically bump the line up one if it sees any of these characters or the two together. Your other option is carriage return plus line feed. So what this says is it will only go to a new line if it sees carriage return plus line feed as a pair. And if it sees just a carriage return by itself, it's basically not going to do anything. And if it sees just a line feed by itself, it's not going to do anything. So it will only decode the pair of them as a new line. And again, you probably want to leave it this way because under noisy conditions, if the sending unit sends carriage return plus line feed, you might only pick up one or the other, and this way it will go to a new line in both cases. I, again, a lot of this applies to old, well, came from old printing teletype, so this is just kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit more... Uh, What's the word that I'm looking for? A little bit more relaxed way of looking at it for screens so that under noisy conditions you get on the screen kind of what you're expecting. Okay, and then font color. Again, these just allow you to set the color that you want for transmitting. So this is set to kind of a lighter green that's got some red and blue in. So we could uh, turn both of these down and have it be just solid green for our receive characters, and then this is your font color for transmitting. And again, say we wanted to make it uh, more of a deep red. And again, this is just your personal preference. So now my decode color, you'll see, has turned to a little bit darker green. So that's everything on page one. Let's go to page two. So page two, log, is whether we're going to log the stuff that's decoded, and if you have an SD card in, it will log everything decoded to that card. And then log set lets you pick the file type. It can be just a plain text file or HTML that you can use in a browser. I think if you do HTML, I haven't played with this. I don't think it'll let me... Yeah, we're, la we're currently logging, so it won't let me change this. I think it'll even show you the colors... Uh, for receive or transmit. Um, timestamp, do you want a timestamp on the log file? Um, do you want to use your local time or UTC time for the timestamp? And then do you want to put the frequency in the log file or not? Again, the defaults for all of this are on. So I'm going to leave them on and we're going to leave it as a text file for right now. And then decode log, if I turn this off, it would let me change some of those settings. And actually, I'll tell you what, we'll turn it off. We'll go back here, and I'm going to change this to an HTML file. And then we'll turn it back on, and then later on we can go look at some of these things and see what, the, what it puts into an HTML file. 
So that's log. Log view lets you look at logs that are currently on. So I just changed it, and you'll see this is an HTM file. The previous ones that I was logging were all text files. So we'll just look at the one that was right before here. And you can look at it on the screen. Of course, you can look at these on your computer. And you'll notice it tells you it's a 7300 RIDI decode, what the date was. And then here's that timestamp and frequency stamp. So this is received data on 14.119.560 uh, megahertz and the date and the time that this started. And then here's all the data that was being decoded. So that allows you to take a look at it right on the 7300 if you need to review. So that's the viewer. And then adjust allows you to adjust the decoding threshold, which is how strong of a, de of a signal do you need to see on here to decode. And if you notice, uh, so here's a station. He's sending CQ. Now he stopped sending CQ, and you see some kind of garbage here. And that's because the adjacent signals are putting in enough noise that it's kind of decoding that. So we can, and the, by the way, the default threshold is 8. It goes from 0, which is just decode anything, and all the way up to 15. And I've experimented with this a little bit. And honestly, um, if you want to not see garbage on the screen, you just need to turn it all the way up to 15. And if you get maybe down at, so even down at 11 or 12 here, you'll see I get a little bit of noise coming in. Unless you're trying to decode RIDI on FM or something where the squelch closes and it's perfectly silent, you see a little bit of stuff in there. So I'm going to set this up to 15 and we'll see how that looks. So that's uh, pages one and two of the menus that you get for the decoder. And again, we'll take a look at the transmit memories here in a little while. In a little while is going to translate to next time, I'm afraid. I think it's best to stop here before everybody's eyes glaze over. In the next video, we'll take a brief look at the transmit memories for RIDI, and I'll explain why I believe that you most likely will never use them. If you find these videos useful, please click on the like button. I'm also always happy to see comments if you have any corrections, suggestions, or questions. If you find my channel useful and you'd like to be notified when more videos come out, please consider subscribing. One way to do that is by clicking on the icon that will pop up at the end of the lower right toward the end of the video, or just click on the subscribe button on the channel page. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.